you're listening to the season two finale of The Heart of You. For more great content between seasons, please join us on Patreon. You are listening to Paris Underground Radio. My name is Annette Delu, and I am the host of The Heart of You. If you don't mind, take a quick second and give a little review to all of the podcasts you listen to that you love. So if you feel guided, give this podcast all of the stars that you want and write a review. It really does help the channel. Thanks so much. Make sure to stay tuned until the end of the episode because I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek as to what you can expect from season three of The Heart of You. You are listening to episode 25, Twin Flames. Now, this is the last episode for this particular season, so I wanted to make it something that was really important for people to know in regards to how to navigate whether or not you have a twin flame, where have you heard this term and why, and all of those big juicy questions. For a long, long time, the term twin flames was something that was sort of reserved for people who were in the spiritual community who really knew exactly what twin flames were. It's been mentioned throughout history, of course. Plato mentions twin flames. Actually, the musical Hedwig and the Angry Inch, there's a song that is basically emulating what twin flames are. There's a lot of references to twin flames throughout the course of history. Now, what exactly are twin flames? The basic, simple answer is this. Twin flames are essentially the same soul that is split into two different humans. And the purpose of this is to transform and rapidly grow your soul's experience. So it's rapid soul growth. It is rapid awakening. It is all of these things. It's super interesting because People like celebrities right now are starting to use the word twin flame like Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox and there are many others that are using these hashtags. And, you know, I'm not saying that they're not twin flames. They very well may be. I have not checked in (laughs) to find out whether or not many celebrities or which celebrities are twin flames. But I want to make sure that people understand that it's not just a a new term for the one, so to speak, or, you know, your significant other or your soulmate. It is something that is much, much different than that. The first thing I want to clarify about this term twin flame is that it's twin, two, two people, one soul. You only have one twin flame if you have a twin flame. And that is the biggest thing is that not everybody has a twin flame. And that's a really, really good thing because once I get into the journey of the twin flame, you're going to understand that, yeah, it's, it's not an easy one in any way. So it's not like a soulmate relationship where everything just clicks and everything's just beautiful and it works and you're like, oh, this person is like the other half of me. Like it's not that type of relationship. And in fact, Many people, as well as the people that I actually learned from myself as far as coaching is concerned when I was going through a lot of my early stages of the twin flame journey, is that this is a connection, not just a relationship. Let's get back to sort of the purpose of the twin flame journey. It is simply a template. It is a template in which you utilize different experiences between the two people, between the two people and the one soul in order to learn more rapidly. Let's say if you're just one person with one soul within your your body, within your auric field, you're going out and you're learning all these lessons throughout your life and then you pass over and then you reincarnate and then you're learning more lessons. Obviously, your lessons are going to be much more rapidly learned if you have two people learning those lessons and reporting back to sort of that same energy. That is the purpose of this entire concept of twin flames. 
many people think that the whole purpose is so you can be in this divine romantic connection with them. Yeah, that is definitely a small part of it. It is a definitely a significant part of it. But I can tell you right now that looking at the past lives throughout the course of my history as a soul, as well as my connection with my twin flame, we have had many, many lifetimes where we didn't get it right, where we uh, I, either I died or he died, or maybe, you know, we ended up with other people or whatever it happens to be. So There have been many lifetimes in which we've tried to sort of, as you would say, get it right and and learn the lessons that we need to learn. But there is no right or wrong, so to speak, even in that, because once you've had the experience, your soul is still reporting back and understanding that, oh, hey, okay, so I learned that lesson, even though we didn't accomplish what we wanted to in that lifetime, I still learned a whole lot from that. What does it mean to be a twin flame and how do you know if you have a twin flame or that you are a twin flame? The thing is, is that I used to say you will know if you are a twin flame, if you are being guided to know the actual information. So for example, how I learned that I was a twin flame was that I had already met my twin flame back in 2013. And I had no idea what a twin flame was. I didn't know what was going on. I started my spiritual awakening shortly before that and had no idea what on earth was going on with me. Thought I was losing my mind and going crazy. It wasn't until uh, roughly around 2015 and 2016 that I actually started understanding what twin flames were. And it was this weird random happenstance where I happened to be in California for work and I was staying at an Airbnb and it was a sort of communal situation. So there was another woman staying in another room in the apartment and we started talking because we started doing tarot cards together and angel cards and all sorts of things. And she started talking about her connection. I started talking about mine she looks at me and she says, you know what? It sounds like you're a twin flame. And I was like, uh, what now? <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. She's like, yeah, it sounds like the connection that you have with this person is a twin flame connection. And I was like, oh, all right. So she told me what that meant. And she told me sort of some of the, you know, signs and all of those things. And I was like, oh yeah, that sounds like us. And then that was it. And I never actually researched it again until probably about a good six to eight months later when I finally was like, oh, right, there was that twin flame thing. And maybe I should research that and see if there's any information about that. And when I did the research back then, there was actually not a whole lot of information on twin flames. I did find a a whole community on YouTube where I was able to actually find people who were on the same path, on the same journey, and I could actually speak to them. And that's how I actually ended up finding my coaches. The biggest thing about figuring out whether or not you're a twin flame is basically knowing it within your heart. Because like I said, I used to be able to say, well, it's only if you are guided towards the term twin flame or the concepts of twin flame, that maybe that's a sign that you are in fact a twin flame. But now because the term has become so huge and it's become like something that is is heard in general public knowledge, I suppose, it's probably not going to be as accurate to say that if you hear the word, you're probably a twin flame because there are not that many twin flames on this planet. What I have been shown is it's between 2 and 3% of the population. Now, what does that mean exactly? It simply means that two or three percent of the the world's population has decided to awaken to the twin flame template. Other people have decided to awaken to many other different types of templates. Just because we as twin flames are awakening to the twin flame template doesn't mean that it's any better or worse than anybody else's way of awakening. It's just a different way, and it's a way in which we've decided to awaken because part of 
our mission may be related to transmuting shadow and darkness within relationships and things like that. So your soul mission has a really big part of identifying whether or not that is part of your soul purpose. So if your soul purpose, if you happen to get an Akashic reading or if you get a reading from anyone and they say that your soul purpose has to do with transmuting the distortions within relationships, really anchoring in unconditional love, things like that, then that might be a really big clue that, yes, okay, you might be on the twin flame path. The other way that you can figure out whether or not you are a twin flame or whether or not you have a twin flame is to simply go within into your intuition and ask. Ask your angels, ask your guides, and they will let you know, yes, you are on this path or no, you are not. And they will tell you this pretty readily because I have had people ask me before, am I on the twin flame path? And the angels will say yes or no. The one thing they will not do, though, is they will not confirm who your twin flame is because that is something that needs to come from within your heart. You need to know within who you are based on your connection with the other person if this is, in fact, your twin flame. Now, this gets super, super tricky. Because the problem with that is that throughout the course of the twin flame journey, there are points in time where you're like, wow, I don't even think I know this person at all. I don't think I'm connected to them. I don't think this is my twin flame. Like there are various different times when you're going through really, you know, purging or transmutation of various different energies that you might feel this push pull between the two of you and you might not know, you know what, I don't know if we really are twin flames and I really doubt and And it is about sort of building up that faith and really understanding. Now, one of the things that will always happen, though, is that if you are definitely spot on with your twin flame, you know, okay, yes, I know this is my twin flame. But then you go through these bouts of denying the connection or not understanding the connection or anything like that. Your angels and guides and the universe will give you every sign possible like every sign possible. (laughs) I remember there being times where I was like, yeah, this is not my twin flame. I don't know what is going on, but this is just not happening. And I was denying the connection and I was saying, I don't want this anymore. And I would get giant signs of his name or there were, you know, small jokes between us. And so then, you know, signs of that would pop up. Another way to know is, you know, seeing repeated numbers if it has to do with your twin flame. 1111 is a pretty common sign that people see in regards to being light workers and that sort of thing. But 1111 is, in fact, the twin flame number. So if you see that a lot, that could also be an indication. Ultimately, nobody can tell you really who your twin flame is. It is something that you will just have to know within your own heart. And then once you know it, it's you can't you can't really unknow it. It's it's pretty much ingrained in there. You might run away from the connection at some point. You might, you know, be chasing after the person at some point. But for the most part, it is it is anchored in and that is what is going to transpire. And that does bring us to the subject of, well, okay, so how does the twin flame journey go? Like what happens? It happens differently for everybody. And I have done some channeling as well as some meditation on the various different groups of twin flames there are. And there are different sort of, and they've they've called them waves for me. Different people call them twin flame groups, whatever you want to call them. There are twin flame waves that have been in divine connection in romantic union for the last 10 years, for the last 20 years, and they still are in connection at this moment. Those are the people who are coaching, who are teaching. Two twin flame couples actually helped coach me and helped to teach me how to spiritually guide others who are on the same path. And also to help others who are maybe going through rough relationship issues. You know, it's this is the template that we're here to break is being in toxic relationships. And so whether or not you're a twin flame, 
you can benefit from this information regardless of whether or not you are. Are you looking for a new book to read? Because I know I always am. Head to Storytime in Paris on Paris Underground Radio with your host, Jennifer Garrity, as she interviews fascinating authors that have a French connection. We will be right back with The Heart of You after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. The information that you get from each of the waves is about the amount of transmutation, the amount of work that you have to do within the twin flame couple. I know that I'm in the next wave after that, which was, so let's say if you you say we have the first wave, which is the, they're the couples that have been in union for, you know, several years, maybe to 10 to 20 years. The second wave are the people who met their twin flames either around 2012 to 2014 in that general vicinity. It could be all the way up to 2015 and backwards to 2011, but for the most part, it would be in that range. That particular wave, they are the ones that are now coming into union in this particular moment. So it's been a a longer journey for that wave. It's been a journey of maybe you know, anywhere between like five to 10 years. And then the next wave are the wave of twin flames who maybe met their their counterpart in 2016, 17, 18, somewhere in that vicinity. And they have a very unique template in the sense that because they don't have the heaviness, they don't have the incredible amount of transmutation that the first and second waves had to transmute, they are able to come into divine union much faster than the previous two waves. Now, part of this has to do with the fact that the previous two waves have actually paved the way for the upcoming twin flames who are now just starting to meet their counterparts. But then also, it's it's sort of a, a a reciprocal energy because the the twin flames who are coming into union now who have only just met their twin flames that union energy is actually helping the twin flames who are in the second and third waves to start accelerating their union energy now what does it mean when i say union energy Union energy is simply that you have balanced the energies between the two of you. So for example, in the past, I had a tendency to be more in my distorted feminine energy as well as my distorted masculine energy. So distorted feminine energy can very much look like victim mentality. Distorted masculine energy can look like forcing, control, all of those things that sort of are not within the flow of your life or or of the universe. And my twin obviously was working on probably something very similar. When you come into balance in your divine masculine and divine feminine energies, that is when you come into the union energy. And what that means is that you can sit in your divine feminine energy, which is receiving It is manifestation. It is creation. And you can know exactly when you need to use that energy and when you need to use your divine masculine energy, which is taking action, making things happen, right? Once you are in that balance of energy and what you would call the zero point, that is when the two energies can magnetize. They move toward each other. Now, the misconception is that in that moment, everybody is going to come together and, you know, you've you've come to that place of balance within yourselves and you're going to come together and you're going to be in this beautiful romantic relationship and it's going to be amazing. And yes, of course, it is going to be amazing. But that doesn't mean that the work stops there. After the union energy happens and let's say the two people come together in a romantic connection, 
it will be devised in a way that is best for the couple. So that means old relationship templates out the window, old relationship ideals also out the window. The twin flame couple will be creating their own rules for their relationship and what that looks like. That is what they are here to anchor in on the planet so people can see and witness hey, just because relationships have been viewed in this way for the last 700,000, 4,000 years doesn't mean that we need to continue it that way. So whatever that looks like for you, that is what you're meant to be doing with your twin flame counterpart. And when the work continues after the union energy happens, you are working side by side in tandem with your energies balanced to then help other people along your mission. So whatever your collective soul purpose is, and chances are your soul purpose and your twin flame soul purpose are mirror images of each other. And so they complement each other perfectly so you can work together to further that energy and further that learning. Now, that's the beautiful part about it. That's the beautiful part of the union energy. What are some of the shadow aspects of the twin flame? There are many different stages that you can go through as a twin flame. Not every single twin flame couple goes through every single stage. I can tell you that my twin flame and I, we went through every single stage and then some and repeated many of the stages, if you will. That was due to the fact that basically I was still transmuting a lot of the energy. I didn't know that we were twin flames. He was still transmuting and doing all of his work as well. And it's the thing is, is that it's not just about one person doing the work and the other person not. The divine feminine and the divine masculine energies and masculine and feminine energies in general operate very, very differently. So the way that the work happens, the energetic work happens, can look very different in both energies. And I just want to clarify that when I'm talking about masculine and feminine energies, it has absolutely nothing to do with gender. Nothing. We're talking about masculine and feminine energy, okay? So you could be in a female body and have dominant masculine energy. You could be in a non-binary body and have completely balanced energies. You could have a dominant masculine energy. It doesn't matter. We are basically talking about just the the energetic influence on any particular action that you might be taking or not taking, if you will, if you're in the feminine energy. Some of the things you might go through on a twin flame journey are as follows. The first thing you might go through is that instant recognition, and that is usually on the divine feminine's part. Divine masculines, they may not see that connection from the first time you meet. They may not even see the connection for quite some time. But for the divine feminine, you will recognize who this person is, meaning that you will have that instant heart connection knowing that you know this person and that you know them through and through, possibly even more than they know themselves, but you have no idea why you feel that way. Another thing that you might go through is a dark night of the soul. So you might come together initially and everything is fantastic and maybe you're friends, maybe you're more than friends, maybe you're lovers. It varies for everybody. But after that phase, there is usually a separation of some sort. And in that comes the dark night of the soul, at least for the divine feminine. So she will go through however long she needs to go through to transmute that sort of shadow energy of being fully attached to her divine masculine. So meaning that once her divine masculine leaves or separates or whatever it happens to be, she goes into that feeling of emptiness, that feeling of sorrow, that feeling of abandonment. And most of the time, what our twin flame is going to do is they are going to trigger the exact wounds that you have that you need to heal. That is where the twin flame mirror comes in. 
not only are they going to trigger those sort of abandonment wounds within you, but then whatever you happen to be doing is automatically triggering their wounds to pull those up to heal as well. Keep in mind, during this entire journey, you are mirroring each other and helping each other along the process. After you've gone through the dark night of the soul, maybe you come out the other side and you've you've learned a lot more about yourself. And most likely at this point, if you have not already started your spiritual awakening, that dark night of the soul, that first one that you have, will most likely trigger your spiritual awakening. And if it hasn't yet, I can probably guarantee you that if you are in fact a twin flame, it will happen even if it's not with the first dark night of the soul, maybe it's going to be with the second or the third. And yes, I can tell you right now that with this journey, you may have multiple dark nights of the soul. Mine seem to decrease in length of time over time. And that's how I knew that I was transmuting all of this energy over the course of the lessons that I was learning getting through all of the hurt and the wounds and everything from my childhood, all of those things. So for example, I think my first dark night of the soul was about six months where I literally did nothing, but I sat on my balcony and I drank copious amounts of coffee and cried basically. Like that's all I did for six months. And then after that, it was you know, maybe three months. And then the next one was two months. And then I think the, you know, the last one I had was, you know, a few minutes. (laughs) So (laughs) like when you come through it, you start understanding how much easier it is to, to move through these energies. And that is the other thing that it is teaching you is how to move through difficult energies instead of staying stuck in them. Because Once you start getting stuck, it's hard to get out. So let's say you have a wound of abandonment. So that was a really big one for me. And then you start thinking about abandonment and how this person abandoned you and you were sitting there crying about the fact that they're not with you and everything else. Okay, so what is going on in this moment? Well, in this moment, they're not abandoning you. That is something that happened in the past. So you can either continue to think about it, therefore actually, in fact, bringing it more into your reality, or you can stop the perpetual suffering and start focusing on something else that actually brings you joy right? So that's eventually how you start getting out of that dark night of the soul is to start recognizing where those shadows are, appreciate them for what they are and for what they're teaching you, and then start to integrate them by recognizing them, by seeing them, by working on them, and then by turning your focus towards something that is, that is joyful. Even if it's just for five minutes a day, it's something that actually helps you pull yourself out of these sort of really deep, dark spaces that you get yourself into. So that's the big and heavy part of it. It's not particularly fun. It's not easy. I can tell you that. Is it transformative? 100%. If you were to see the person that I was, you know, even five years ago, 10 years ago, completely different energy, 100% completely different energy. That is the one thing to be absolutely grateful for in this journey is the amount and speediness of the recovery and spiritual growth is just, it's incredible. It's incredible. There's a reason why Paris is considered one of the most romantic places in the world. Lily Heisey of Romancing in Paris explores all of these little hidden places where you can experience the love and the romance of the City of Light. You can find Romancing in Paris at parisundergroundradio.com. We will be right back with The Heart of You after a word from our sponsors. Welcome back to The Heart of You on Paris Underground Radio. If you are going through this right now, I can tell you that it makes it 10 times easier if you reach out for help. 
So if you do need help on this journey, please definitely contact me and we can talk about what we can sort of devise as a plan for you to get through this journey as quickly and as painlessly as possible. You go through those difficult times. You go through that sort of push-pull energy with your twin flame. So it's either your running away from the connection or they are running away from the connection or you're chasing or they're chasing and it never seems to line up at the exact right time. It's like one person is doing one thing, the other person is doing the other. Meanwhile, during the entire time, triggering each other's wounds. Now, there are going to be other actors. There's going to be other players in the entire scenario because For example, there are certain things that my twin needed to heal within himself that I could not give him. I could not give him those experiences because it just wasn't part of who I am. So he had other people, other relationships, other people within his life that were giving him the experiences that he needed in order to overcome some of those childhood wounds, to overcome some of those things that were keeping him blocked from ascending further. And the same thing for me. I received the same type of guidance in the sense that various people would come into my life and show me different things and show me different wounds that I had. And that was just that that ability to go that much further and, and heal what needed to be healed. Fast forward through all of these various different experiences you have with your twin flame. Most people would say, oh my gosh, if you're going through this for years, what do you do? Do you still date other people? Like you have this connection. What happens? How do you get through this knowing that this is your twin flame and it is potentially the goal for you guys to be together at some point in your lifetime. It really does depend on the individual. If you're feeling guided to date other people and have other relationships, then go ahead and do it because you're not going to miss the opportunity to get together with your twin flame. It will come together when it's divinely guided. It will also come together when your energies are balanced and it is just the right time. The other aspect of this is some people have decided, well, I don't want to be with anybody else other than my twin flame. And that's perfectly fine as well. That is your complete free will choice to decide to just not date anybody and, you know, work on your spiritual growth. The challenge that can come with this, though, is that if you decide to take that path, you will end up being stuck potentially in waiting energy. And you don't want to be stuck in that waiting energy, like I'm waiting for my twin flame to wake up. I'm waiting for him to come back. I'm waiting for him to do this. Because the thing is, is that if you are just sitting there stagnant and you're not doing anything, then your twin is probably doing the same thing. Because you mirror each other. You both are doing work on different ends of the spectrum. So if you are sitting there waiting and not evolving spiritually, not doing your research, not doing your spiritual growth, not working on your wounds, not doing any of that, then you're pretty much your connection might stay stagnant. Now, the really lovely part about the universe is that the universe is always going to give you a giant kick in the butt if you need it. So if you are staying stuck, the universe might step in and be like, "Okay, hey, it's time for you to get off your butt. I'm going to throw this wrench in your whole plan and it's going to force you to do something different, right? All of those particular types of moments that you have that are like that throughout this journey are meant to sort of get you back on the path that you need to be on. The next thing about twin flames is once you start getting through all of those particular issues, the wounds, you've worked on balancing your energy, all of those things, then you start understanding that, okay, cool, so we're getting close to being in that union energy. Well, how do I know if I'm getting close to being in that union energy? The first sort of sign that you have that you're getting close to that union energy is that you are going to start feeling them much more often. You can have 
telepathic connection with your twin flame. You can actually connect with them in the 5D. You can talk to them. They can hear you in their clairaudience. They can feel you in their clairsentience. There are a lot of different ways in which your twin can actually communicate with you. And it's mostly in their higher self that is communicating with you in these ways. So I want you to understand that it's not necessarily the 3D person is not necessarily aware of these things. It is the 5D version or the higher self version of your twin flame. But once you're in those balanced energies and all of your psychic gifts have kicked in, you will be able to consciously understand, oh, hey, I'm going to connect with my twin and see what he has to say. And if he's doing the same thing at the same time, you can actually start co- like comparing and seeing, okay, cool. So is, is, is our psychic connection working, right? Which is something that you can do that is super fun. Once you're actually connected in that way and you find yourself getting closer into that union energy, you will also notice that there is going to be a new guardian angel that steps in. So this is a shared guardian angel. It is almost like a union guide, if you will. And I actually didn't even know about my shared guardian angel until only about, I would say, like six months ago. He basically made himself known to me and he said, yeah, like every single twin flame couple has a union guardian angel. And basically that union guardian angel sort of comes online when you are getting close to that union energy. And basically he just helps both people along that path to make sure that they are in fact doing the exact right things that they need to do to get into that union energy. And once that union energy has been solidified, what I've been shown is that that shared guardian angel will stick around for a little while. So maybe a year, maybe two years, depending on how long the couple needs that guardian angel to stick around. And then they'll they'll take off after that because their job is done and they'll move on to another twin flame couple. So that is that job of the twin flame angel. And it's interesting because if you have listened to the episode with Callista, where she was talking about female archangels, she said to me that I have a guardian angel that's a seraphim. And I and I was really confused. I was like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I didn't I didn't know that. And I actually checked in after the fact and sort of looked at who that might be. And I figured out that the seraphim was actually, in fact, our shared guardian angel, which is super, super cool. So once you have that that connection, the reason why you need the shared guardian angel is because when you're working with your own guardian angels, you can only ask your guardian angels to work on your behalf. And obviously your twins guardian angels, he can ask, he or she can ask on their behalf for their own guardian angels to help them. But I can't ask for help in in regards to his guardian angels, right? Because we're all sovereign beings, we all have free will, and you cannot affect somebody else's free will. The shared guardian angel, we both can work with. So the only way that the shared guardian angel comes online is when both people are actually in that space of being able to work with that guardian angel. So both people need to be connected. Once they're both connected, and maybe they don't know that they're connected, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. You don't have to know if you're connected or not. Your higher self knows. That way you both can work with the shared guardian angel to help create scenarios that are going to help solidify that energetic union. I know this was a lot of information about Twin Flames. It's a huge subject, and I've spent the last, you know, seven-ish years researching, experiencing, experimenting, like just going through it, going through the emotions, going through the entire experience. So I, I have a lot of knowledge and a lot of energetic imprints in regards to Twin Flames. So if you have any other questions, please do not hesitate to contact me. For those of you who are still here listening and you know for a fact that you're not a twin flame, 
Thank you so much for listening, and I hope this was informative for you. Maybe you found out about this, and maybe you were led to this podcast because maybe somebody you know is a twin flame, and you have to pass on this information to them. And if you're not a twin flame, just be super, super grateful (laughs) that you are on a much easier relationship path. And I just want to reiterate the fact that being a twin flame does not mean that you're having this storybook, fairy tale, romantic connection that has zero problems and everything is hearts, flowers, and unicorns. It's absolutely not the case at all. It's a rough journey. It's a hard thing to go through. It will open you up in ways you never experienced. It will crack your heart open. It will break your heart. It will mend your heart. It will make your heart full. It will make you just feel more elation than you've ever felt. It will make you feel the most pain you've ever felt. It's the nature of the twin flame journey. And for those of you who are on it, I'm with you. I get it. And I wish you all of the beautiful energy in the world. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to say goodbye for now. It's only going to be another month, I think, before we start season three. Make sure to stay tuned for the next month. Go back and listen to all of those episodes on Paris Underground Radio you may have missed. Just to give you a little sneak peek of some of the topics we will be covering for season three. We have sound healing, EFT tapping technique, which is a technique to be able to release the trauma from the meridians of your body. We're going to cover Feng Shui, Qigong, and many other subjects. If you have any subject matter that you would like me to cover on this podcast, feel free to email me. And if you would like to find out other information about events or anything else that I am doing, feel free to sign up at my website for my newsletter. You can reach me at infinitesoullove.com on all social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at infinitesoullove1111. Take care and I'll see you next time. This episode of The Heart of You was produced by Jennifer Garrity for Paris Underground Radio. For more great content between seasons, please join us on Patreon.